Um, the, today I would like to uh, exp uh, talk about uh, the, uh, the this title, the recent our uh, activities of uh, the um, the XFs, uh, XA absorption study of photo excited state of photocatalyst. So this is uh, today our my topic. Then the, I have uh, um, I would like to briefly explain myself, but uh, already the professor Asker already the explained. Uh, uh, my uh, the CV also there and then I will but I will briefly just show you uh, show you my the CV and the, the I explained the, my topic the, the today's topic also then the, our motivations then the first I'd like to explain about the, the dynamics of we are using the hard X-ray X absorption spectroscopy and the, this is mainly the tungsten trioxide uh, then the after the, the first topic I'd like to have a um, break a, br a brief break and uh, I Accept the, the same questions. Then the next to uh, the, in the next topic, uh, this is soft X-ray study. Then we have uh, we measured the the, uh, the hematite and the kakaba uh, tongue state at uh, the par par X field that that's the, in South Korea. So now I will show you the my uh, the, the, I, I this is my CV. Then the uh, when I started, I got to the um, my PhD on um, in two thousand ten. Then the after. Um, I got a PhD. I worked uh, as a fort, um, postdoc, postdoc at the Photon Factory. Then I moved to the Hokkaido University. And uh, at that moment, uh, the professor Asakura was my supervisor. The, since then, the, I used uh, the exafils. So now, uh, because uh, the Sakura started its uh, the user operation, then the, I started to use the uh, Sakura. Then I moved to the, in 2018, I moved to the the Utrecht University, then the, my supervisor was Funk, uh, Professor Funke de Groot. And uh, uh, since then, I used uh, the soft X-ray, um, the spectroscopy, then the, I, I went to uh, the power x field. So um, the cells, uh, now oh. I'm working at the, the European x field, and uh, uh, my, I belong to the FXC beam line. And, uh, this is my uh, topic today. So first, in the first part, I directly explain the tungsten trioxide case. Uh, we use uh, the Sakura. And the uh, next slide, in the next topic, that I directly use, uh, explain the, the soft X ray study of the hematite, the copper tungsten. The, these are mainly uh, done in the power X field. So, our motivation is very simple. In principle, the, in principle the, the, I think um, the photocatalyst is one of the most uh, uh, the green uh, as uh, ideal, the ideal procedure uh, to produce the, the energy resource. For example, if you put ideal, it, if you put uh, the photocatalyst into the water, then the shine the light, it promote, it can promote uh, the the uh, water splitting reaction. Then the water will be converted uh, to the hydrogen and the oxygen. And um, in order to the um, the develop the new on the or the uh, efficient photocatalyst. We use uh, we evaluated uh, its photocatalytic activity to use and uh, uh, check the uh, the evolution of hydrogen and oxygen. This is uh, checking the activity. Then the theoretically in the we have some theoretical uh, we can uh, we have uh, some insight from the theoretical uh, the studies. For example, the FT calculation gives us uh, the band gap uh, band gap position of, against the alkyl chemical potential potentials of uh, hydrogen uh, evolution reaction or the oxygen evolution reaction. That's a give insight uh, which material is uh, active for the water catalytic reaction or a uh, water splitting reaction. Or then we have uh, some uh, insight for photocarriers uh, re, uh, dynamics. Photocarriers is uh, one of uh, the center play the center role of uh, promoting the water splitting reaction. So we can use uh, the femtosecond spectroscopy, picosecond, uh, the optical spectroscopy is mainly. Um, how, however, then I, now I have, uh, yeah. However, we have uh, some, um, uh, some the open questions, for example, the lifetime of photocarriers, we don't know the, exactly the lifetime of photocarriers because there are several uh, different processes, something like uh, the, um, the carrier recombination process or the some carriers will be consumed uh, the photocatalytic reaction itself. So we don't know the which um, the uh, reactions or the process uh, is dominant. Uh, for the each uh, time domains, so we drive also the 
how the photo carrier, in principle, the photo carrier will be created inside, but uh, how it moves to the uh, deliver to the uh, the surface, then the, on the surface, it, uh, the photocatalytic reaction happens. So we don't know the exactly the, how the photocatalytic the deliver the move to the surface and uh, how promote the photocatalytic reaction. These are the open questions. So we, we've tried to apply the, this the, uh, the XA absorption spectroscopy to understand the photocatalytic reaction or uh, the uh, role of uh, photocarriers inside the uh, photocatalyst. Uh, and photo, uh, X absorption spectroscopy is uh, um, useful to understand the local structure or local electronic state of uh, photocatalytic materials. Then we use uh, the, this technique uh, to understand, uh, to study the photocatalytic reactions. And and then uh, the first example is the tungsten uh, trioxide. Yes. So we have we studied the tungsten trioxide at Sakura. We measure the tungsten L3H and L1H spectrum at Sakura. So Sakura is uh, uh, the what probably I, I think the one of the most uh, the compact XFL. However, it gives a very large X-ray intensity. Also, the it's uh, reaches the X-ray energy reaches the 20 k. Electron volt. That is a uh, that is a uh, higher than the Swiss fell or the other some other facilities, and uh, it started uh, it use operation in 2012, I think. Then um, that's uh, it has uh, already and uh, 10, 10 years the use operations. Then they have uh, a lot of uh, they did a lot of development that uh, now is they nowadays it is very for users that is very useful the uh, facility for the as a XFL. so here's uh, the air, uh, here's the, the, the on the electron guns here then the electron will be created at this uh, the uh, injector hutch then the, it's drive to the 700 meter long then the, we use uh, the um, we can use the x-ray the one of the um, the advantageous point of the uh, um, sakura is we can uh, use uh, the Two beam lines simultaneously. For example, um, the the rep rate of X ray pulse is sixty hertz, but uh, the Sakura um, the provide uh, provides the X ray one after another. That means the each X ray has to use um, have uh, the thirty hertz X ray pulses. That's we that is why we can um, use uh, the two beam lines simultaneously. Uh, in the final part, I'd like to explain briefly the, our beam line. So our beam line is tandem, but we are not uh, provided the um, uh, exit one after another. So then the, we have to switch the beam line. So that's it, uh, one good um, point for the soccer, I think. And uh, this was this picture was taken in 2014. This was very simple because our beam, our experiment was uh, a very simple setup, and uh, we just need is uh, the cameras, the sample jet, a liquid jet, the sample that has the tungsten trioxide sample. The always the sample was saturated. Then the, that was very simple, but because um, in the that was the the very early stage of the sucker operation. Nowadays we have a very good the integrated system. This take picture was taken in two thousand uh, uh, twenty one. Then. The, um, that they developed integrated um, the instrument for the liquid jet chemistry. So nowadays we can easy to operate uh, uh, the, to check the overlap uh, X-ray or the um, the jet positions or the uh, transient signals. Very very easy to operate. So um, we appreciate this uh, setup at this um, nowadays. Uh, we use uh, the, this setup. So now I try to explain the tungsten trioxide case. Tungsten, uh, the tungsten trioxide has um, uh, absorbed uh, the uh, the solar spectrum below the two uh, four six uh, four six hundred four hundred and sixty nanometer, and uh, the tungsten conduction band the tungsten uh, oxide consists of a tungsten five d orbitals. The and the balance band con consists of oxygen two p orbitals. If the uh, X tungsten oxide tungsten trioxide absorbs the the photons. Then the, it create a one uh, hot excited, hot, um, hot excited electron in the conduction band, and uh, in in the valence band, ele an electron hole will be created. Um, well, what we measured at Sakura is after the creation of the air electro excited electrons and the photo holes, and we measured to track the the transient signals. So at that moment, we didn't have uh, the 
um, the arrival time, that's correct, the timing jitter between the X-ray and laser and X-ray timing, but uh, we didn't have that at the moment. Also, we did use the, the relatively thicker jet. So we, our time resolution was limited. So that's two factors. However, we got a good transient signals. So we found the three different, uh, we fo focus on the three different uh, peak position. That's uh, the peak, we call it peak egg. That's come from the change of the edge uh, edge push and the shift of the edge edge shift. That's uh, that's uh, suggest the tungsten five plus the six plus convert to the five plus because uh, the tungsten received the one electron. Then uh, the peak C comes uh, has a similar trend have but the how that's exhibit the another other trend of the transient signals. Then the, I will direct to show you the rate. Also that P, peak B has a different trend uh, compared to uh, against the peak A. So uh, we measure the, the kinetic traces of these three peaks. Uh, this this uh, the kinetic trends uh, kinetic trace of the three peaks. So the first we measure the uh, the peak A positions. Then the, that's uh, after the photo excitation. That's the time zero position. Then this uh, the its intensity increased a lot, uh, very fast. Then they decreased the very um, the gradually decreased. And the peak C has uh, uh, the similar trend. Uh, very at the time zero position, but uh, after the uh, after the initial rise or the photo um, excitation, it slightly decreased the, its intensity. So that has uh, another uh, the process uh, that includes another process. Uh, so the that's this con this process consistent with the peak B position that gives uh, that it peak B position it didn't change the, that's. Uh, intensity didn't change at first, then the, it increased slightly, then the decreased, uh, then relaxed to the uh, the initial state. So we have uh, the, we found the several uh, different trend uh, in the tungsten trioxide L3H. Then the, this is one summary. Uh, this is a summary of the result of L3H. So at first, then the at first. Uh, at first, then a uh, photo excited state created, and we found uh, the very that is the initial photo excitation that uh, that happens to below the 500 femsecond. That means uh, 500 femsecond is our uh, the time resolution at uh, that moment, and then then the second and the second grade uh, the slope relatively slow process that's uh, that includes uh, uh, the uh, the structure change. We say that after after this uh, the process, um, the a metastable state is uh, formed after the uh, the this uh, relatively slow process. Then the relax after that after the the second process the uh, the photo excited state um, the recovered the relaxed to the uh, the ground state. So we have we found the three different processes at thanks uh, L three H spectrum. So uh, these are the summary, also the brief summary. So, but uh, uh, we we believe that we found uh, the metastable state, and that includes uh, um, the structure change. But we didn't know the exact what hap what kind of structure change happened. So we focus on the on um, the tungsten L one edge because tungsten L one is very sensitive to the structure change uh, compared to the tungsten L three edge. For example, this kind, of, this is a the comparison of several tungsten of the uh, the compounds uh, of the uh, tungsten arranged uh, spectra of the several tungsten compounds. Uh, the this uh, uh, the tungsten arranged has uh, the uh, the pre H peak uh, pre H peaks. Uh, this uh, the very sensitive the, that uh, this sensitive to the local structure of tungsten. Uh, Trioc uh, tungsten. For example, if uh, the ta tungsten has uh, the locally the octahedral structure, that's uh, will uh, the, that's peak pre H peak intensity very small. However, if uh, the its peak in uh, that structure is close very close to the tetrahedral structure, that's give that yields uh, very um, obvious the uh, the pre H peak. So we focus we focus on the this uh, peak intensities. Then we measure the Thanks air one and just uh, the spectrum at the uh, sakura. At uh, the, after the photo excitation, then um, the uh, the photo excited state will 
uh, can be reproduced by the energy shift of the ground state spectrum. That means that just after the photo excitation, just uh, the shift of the spectrum happens. However, if after the 150 picosecond, these two peak intensities, uh, the ratio of these two peak intensities has changed. So we uh, confirmed, uh, we try to confirm that this uh, event uh, after uh, using uh, measuring the kinetic trace of these energy peaks. So we fixed, we fixed uh, these uh, two peak uh, energy, uh, these two positions for the, of X energies. Then we found, we measured the kinetic X in XA absorption intensities. At B, at the peak B pressure, the, it, it, after the photo excitation, then the peak intensity, intensity didn't change. However, if after the photo, if we measure the peak, uh, peak A position, um, the X-ray absorption intensity changed after the 10, uh, 10 picoseconds gradually increased and then each reached the, uh, its maximum. So that means the, um, the, that's consistent with the, the, what we observed, the transient X-ray absorption uh, spectrum. Um, then, however, we didn't uh, figure out the, what kind of uh, uh, the structure change happens after the uh, photo excitation. Then we measure, uh, we use uh, the theoretical calculation that we use uh, the full potential multiple scattering code to uh, reproduce the transient uh, L1 H spectrum. Then uh, there is a result of the transient um, uh, theoretical calculations that we, um, the, during the, the uh, investigation of uh, um, the theoretical uh, the structure change, we moved the, the tungsten atoms uh, in the various kinds of directions. Then we found only if only if we may, uh, move the tungsten atoms in in the uh, the B axis or C axis, that gives uh, the that reproduces uh, well the transient signals. That means the uh, after the photo excitation, the where during the creation of the metastable state, the tungsten interaction ha uh, has a uh, um, inosotropic structure change. Only the one di some directions uh, are allowed to move. Uh, the tungsten atom is allowed to move the only the se limb, uh, selected or the um, the uh, one uh, specific directions. So these are results uh, from the tungsten uh the tungsten L one H case, and uh, this was uh, uh, erected uh, from the uh, this rework was elected from the uh, the front cover of PCCP. We are uh, very glad to hear that we are, our work was uh, selected as uh, the, um, the front cover of PCCP. So um, this is uh, the first, uh, first topic of Tungus Central Access. So now I have uh, the short break and the questions. So thank you, uh, Wemar san So the, uh, now the uh, paper is uh, sh short time questions. So the, in the, uh, form of fact, if you have some questions, please keep microphone on and ask directly to him or chat. Oh, yes, yes. All right. Hi, I'm Paola Lucas from Modena uh, in Italy. Uh, my question was, why do you think uh, the structural modification is anisotropic? after the photo excitation what's the reason behind it um we uh, we uh, um the, we assume that uh, um that there's a i mean after the photo excitation then tank um the tanks of uh, the uh, the balance band um i will try to show you the um this slide yeah so after the photo excitation then the uh, one electron um, occupies occupies the, the conduction bands. That comes from the um, the un, in principle the um, the anti anti bonding state of uh, uh, with uh, between the uh, tungsten and the oxygen bond. So if uh, the anti bonding state, then the I and that means the the, uh, the bond ring bond will the uh, uh, the bond will the the loosen. Then they go to the other to uh, the there's some repulsion force of the repulsion. Then they move to the other direction. So I 
I didn't show you the, I couldn't show you the, because I didn't uh, the, have uh, the slide, but uh, in the, our paper, we have uh, the, um, some uh, the illustration of the D orbitals, how D orbitals, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the spread it in the space. Then they consider to the D orbital, the uh, distribution of D orbitals, then the movement of uh, the, um, the tanks and atoms is very consistent of uh, the anti-bonding state uh, the, the special distribution of anti-bonding state and uh, um, of uh, and the movement. That is a consistent movement. So yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So other questions? If not, so please uh, continue your presentation. Uemura san. Uh, yes. I... So um, now I'd like to start, I'd like to explain the dynamics of uh, the soft X-ray case. Um, after I moved to uh, the Utrecht University, I started to use uh, the, uh, the soft X-ray uh, the beam lines, mainly, uh, uh, mainly in, in person, I used the, the Power XFL. And the Power XFL then started its use operation in 2017. Then um, the, that's, uh, they have uh, the three, two, three beam lines, I think the two beam lines in the hardware X-ray, one is uh, the soft X-ray beam line. Uh, that, that is a relatively contact, uh, compact uh, the XFL, then um, that's the one uh, the total length of the parallax phase is 1.1 kilometer long. Then the um, it's uh, the here is the injector. Then the here's the the hard X-ray beam line. The sort of X-ray beam line in the is middle of uh, uh, the uh, the parallax phase. So that's we can use uh, the 250 to the 1,000, uh, uh, 1,000 and 300 electron volts. Then the pack duration is 50 uh, frames second. That the rep rate is uh, 30 hertz. That is relatively um the now it's uh, we can use uh, the X-ray pulse at, uh, at 60 hertz. There there are the two the different uh, the end station inside the the. Uh, the soft X-ray beam, right? We can measure the X-ray absorption, X, uh, resonant inelastic scattering, also the diffraction, uh, resonant soft X-ray diffraction. Uh, this picture was taken in 2019, and uh, there, at that moment, the new station, the new the resonant soft X-ray diffraction station was just installed at that moment. And then we are using the X-ray uh, and X-ray absorption, the leak station. This is the inside the control hatch. This is the um, the, uh, the brief, uh, the illustration of uh, the instrument itself. And uh, what we measure the, at the soft X-ray beam line is the hematite. And uh, first, we measure the first hematite. Hematite is one of the uh, most studied uh, uh, photoelectrodes or the photocatalytic uh, materials because uh, the iron is a abundant element. So we try, if we can utilize the uh, photo, the hematite as a photocatalyst that, that should be very uh, useful for us or uh, the helpful for to for the uh the photocatalytic uh, development of photocatalyst however there's uh, the inter we know the intrinsic um the limitation that's it the whole diffusion length is very short that's uh, people uh, people say that that that's the limits limits the uh, catalytic activity of uh, the hematite. So we try to understand the uh, photocarrier dynamics, how the affect uh, uh, the photocarrier lifetimes, or the uh, the final goal is the, to understand the uh, uh, the uh, hot, hot hole, uh, the electron hole, the uh, the diffusion lengths, or some other properties of photoelectrons. But const uh, from the viewpoint of X absorption spectroscopy. One of the uh, advantages of uh, the, air, uh, the soft X spectroscopy is we can directly observe the 3D electrons uh, the using the soft X because uh, the iron L3 is uh, the excitation come from the iron 2P to 3D uh, transitions. So we can directly observe the 3D electrons. So this is the result of the uh, um, XF X absorption, uh, I don't X, L3 X absorptions uh, of hematite. So we got the uh, relative compared to the, uh, the circular case, but the, um, 
the signal to noise ratio is um, not good as uh, the Sakura case, but uh, that we go to the transient, obvious transient signals. And uh, at 0 0.2 picosecond, we got uh, the turn this kind of uh, this feature of transient signal. This comes from the we believe this comes from the um, the uh, the oak iron two species. So that means the iron uh, the uh, number of the electron changes five to six. Then uh, that's reflect this spectrum reflects uh, the change of the D number of the electrons that we compare to theoretical calculations. Um, and then, however, we couldn't distinguish the these change uh, difference between these three uh, the time uh, delay times. Uh, so we for, uh, measure the transient, uh, the uh, with transient things, uh, the kinetic traces of this uh, at, the, at this energy point to figure out the ch difference or the, the these are identical or these are the different. So we found that these, there are two different uh, kinetic processes included uh, when uh, below the 10 picoseconds. So that means that these three, so I mean that these three time delay times are different, uh, different state, uh, the excited state. For, uh, the first with uh, the very fast time decay uh, relaxation process for, um, observed or below the one picosecond. And uh, it slight, we found also the slightly long delay, uh, the slightly long uh, slow, the relaxation process be, uh, up to the 10 picosecond. So we confirm this, uh, uh, the kinetic constant or the processes are consistent with uh, the previous work um, observed by the XUV, uh, uh, the spectroscopy. And, uh, and then we, Observe the uh, the resonant in elastic scattering. Resonant in elastic scattering gives we uh, we uh, um, and and uh, supposed the resonant in elastic scattering gives us more detailed uh, the uh, energy energy levels or the detailed structures of uh, the uh, excited state of a hematite. Then we measured uh, one picosecond, uh, one picosecond, ten picosecond, and the negative delay point. That is the uh, the uh, just the, uh, just like the ground state. And uh, after the photo excitation, we found uh, the difference uh, between the uh, one picosecond, ten picosecond. That means the, that's also that's a consistent. That is consistent with uh, uh, the previous result of L3H. So we found uh, several different uh, photo excited states created after the photo excitation of uh, uh, the hematite. Uh, this is a summary of uh, the, some photo excited state of uh, the hematite. Then after the photo excitation, uh, the very fast relaxation that um, that's we call the photo, uh, hot, hot carriers, then the photo excited carriers, um, Excited carriers relax to the bound edge positions. Then, the, after the, this relaxation, there's a further uh, the relaxation process happens. Uh, it um, it continues to the ten, around the ten picosecond. Then it grow, uh, the recover to the ground state. Um, this is the, our uh, result from the hematite. And uh, this is the, another topic is the copper tongue state. Copper tongue state is uh, um, the or, or is one. Uh, one of the uh, stud, um, also the well studied, one of the well studied is um, the uh, photocatalytic materials. And uh, the, that gives, uh, this is uh, the um, open question about the be difference between the tanks and trioxide and copper tank state. For if the copper tank, uh, copper is uh, introduced in the copper uh, tanks and trioxide, that uh, means uh, that creates the um, the copper tank state, the boundary, and bad edge positions uh, will decrease, or the band gap will de uh, will decrease on the cup on the copper tank state. So that means the uh, the copper uh, affects the band uh, band gap uh, band structure of uh, the entire the photocatalyst. So people claims that copper three D objects contribute to the conduction band. That's the conduction band edge uh, the uh, 
lower, uh, become lower than compared to the tungsten or uh, oxide, then the bandwidth will be uh, will be uh, will become smaller. Or the, some people claim the copper 3D orbiters contribute to the balance bandwidth. That means the uh, another uh, another um, state uh, creates uh, the above the uh, or, uh, normal uh, ba balance bandage. So that's good. That shrinks. That shrink the band edge, uh, uh, band gap of a uh, compound tank state. So I we did. However, that there's the uh, uh, this uh, uh, this discussion is uh, not. I mean, the, this is not. This is still under debate. So we are we try to understand. The copper, uh, the state of the copper tank state, uh, the role of the copper uh, inside the copper tank state. So we measure the, uh, again, we measure the copper tank state at the, the power XFL. We got uh, the transient signal, good transient signals of copper L3H. And uh, we, found, uh, uh, we found that the copper, compared to the uh, first derivative of uh, the copper L3H spectrum, uh, the copper uh, L3H spectrum shift to the lower energy, this L, uh, the this direction, the lower energy side. However, if we, if we consider about the copper L3H spectrum, this movement is a bit uh, weird, uh, strange, because, for example, uh, if the copper, uh, uh, now it's the, inside the copper tongue state, the copper, copper the balance of uh, the copper is copper 2 plus. Kappa two plus. If the kappa two plus compared to kappa two plus and the kappa one plus species, the kappa uh, L three H uh, moves to the higher energy direction because uh, the kappa uh, two one plus at d ten state d ten state. Then the impulse for the task, there is no transition from the two p to three uh, d or three uh, d orbitals. That is why the the kappa L three H moves to the higher energies. If the copper three plus is created, then the screening uh, screening effect has will change. Then the copper also this uh, the this spectrum uh, the copper L three H spectrum uh, will move to the uh, the higher energy direction. So in principle, the, from the consider the static measurement, the in the movement in the lower energy direction is. Uh, the strain uh, is a bit strange. Of, uh, so that is why we are, we are curious about how it, uh, why this the spectrum uh, spectrum change happens. Also, one one another thing is we have observed a very small tiny peak at the, the A peak A position. If we fix the ener uh, X energy at this position, we measure the kinetic traces. Then we found that very fast decay process happens. This at the energy position. However, this energy position, there's in principle the, um, the uh, static measurement, there is no resonant absorption, very small uh, resonant absorption. That is also the, um, the uh, interesting the point of the copper is rich. So, our consider to the previous the, uh, result, uh, our interpretation is uh, uh, the summar uh, is summarized this peak. Figure. So uh, after photo excitation, the kappa will receive uh, some electrons, but uh, it's uh, the d electron number of d electron didn't change. That's the that that's because uh, the kappa kappa spectrum moved to the uh, the lower energy kappa uh, L three H moved to the lower energy uh, direction. So the kappa L kappa the received the uh, the excess electrons. Through the hybridization of the tungsten or the oxygen uh, the orbiters, then um, then the, there is another species that is the more excess the electrons uh, received uh, some kappa species. The more excess electrons received, that moves to the that gives the very small bump of uh, the copper transient spectrum. Then after the one picosecond, this excess, uh, the species, that's copper species, which uh, with an excess electron density uh, disappeared. Then, however, the in total, the copper still have uh, the uh, the increased electron density. That is why the copper of uh, uh, the L3H moved to the in the lower direction. That is our interpretation. So, in principle, our conclusion is uh, the copper didn't 
was not affected but uh, by the photo excitation and uh, direct will not directly receive the photo excited erections however it the observes the uh photo excited state of tongue central exercise so we believe this couple is uh, the spectator of uh, the couple uh tongue uh tongue the couple tongue state uh the photo excitation so then the um the consider uh the now we have we focused on the uh the metal side uh the, that's consists the metal or objects consists of um forms uh, the uh foot uh, conduction band of photo excite uh photo erect uh photo catalytic materials however if we use uh, the uh the soft x-rays we can use uh, we can measure the oxygen cage or the other a nitrogen cage or the carbon cage that is important for the chemistry uh, in part uh, particular in particular uh, the oxygen oxygen 2p objects uh, forms uh, the uh, valence band of uh, the photo many of the photocatalytic materials then the, if we measure the oxygen cage spectrum we get the good uh, the some information the very the new information from of uh, the electron holes in the valence band stage so we measure the hematite, uh, uh, oxygen cage of hematite. Then we uh, at the parallax field, then we got the uh, some interesting result. And so recently, uh, so we measured the oxygen cage spectrum of hematite. Then the, this uh, the oxygen cage spectrum come in principle come from the hybridization of uh, the iron three D orbitals. That's that is why the, these two uh, the, these strong peaks come from the hybridization of the hematite. So that's that's reflects the uh, the iron state uh, in principle the uh, state of irons uh, iron three D orbitals. Then the, after the photo excitation that's spectrum shift to the it's in the spectrum shift to the uh the raw energy side this reflects the uh the iron receives one electron after the photo excitation and uh, we measure the, these uh two energy points that's the the that's the edge h um edge portion of a cup uh, oxygen cage uh the uh just and uh, the this is come from the t2d objects then we found the first decay process at the energy Y portion. That's from the very first uh, process exists. That's exhibit the first process exists. Exhibit. The one I'd like to emphasize, these very small, tiny uh, features below the edge portion, that's, that's, that's energy portion. There's no, in principle, there's no resonant uh, exit absorption. So, However, if we focus on the M, uh, enlarge the, this point uh, compared to the other delay point, we found that very small, even though that's very small, but uh, we found that the uh, very small, even though the uh, very small, but we found the transient uh, feature at the, the below the edge position. The compared to the uh, band edge, uh, the, uh, compared to the uh, the oxygen cage spectrum and uh, the band edge positions of uh, the hematite. This energy point corresponds to the uh, in band edge of uh, band edge position or uh, end uh, band edge position the uh, the con uh, valence band edge portions. So that means uh, means that we believe that this come from the uh, direct of uh, transition from the oxygen 1s to oxygen 2p a whole state spectrum. We fixed uh, uh, the energy X energy at this portion. Then the, we measured the X ray uh, 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 the X absorption, the kinetic, the, and uh, and we found the very fast kinetic traces, uh, kinetic event uh, observed. So these uh, the this work were uh, accept recently very recently accepted and now uh, probably uh, this will be published in the uh, in few weeks I think and uh, here's a, then the, here's a summary of uh, the our uh, the photo excited study uh, folks excited the study of the photo excited of the photo catalyst uh, that we measure the tank center exercise using sakura and the hard x-ray uh, the x-ray absorption spectroscopy the uh, uh, the views uh, the very uh, several the 
different state of a photo excited state. Also, the <coughs> we measure the hematite and copper tan state. Also, that we measure the uh, oxygen cage spectrum of the hematite. Then we got the several interesting uh, the uh, photo excited state on the transient spectrum. So I try to uh, acknowledge the old my uh, old collaborators. Also the uh, the these uh, I also the uh, appreciate uh, the uh, the funds that support our uh, the research activities. Finally, I'd like to briefly show uh, our beam line. So the, this is uh, our the beam line. Now I'm working at the, the European spell. The, the we have uh, our we our facility is the one of the longest uh, the largest uh, the XFL, XFL facilities, and uh, we have the two in principle we have the two sites. Uh, this is the uh, the injector site. Then this uh, exists in, on the DAISY site, and the uh, electrons created in the DAISY site. It's traveled to the uh, probably the two point uh, two kilometer long, I think. Then the, there's the electron bump. And uh, uh, during the travel, during the two kilometer travel, then the electron creates the coherent X rays, and uh, that provides uh, the uh, there's a three uh, such uh, the undulators. Then the, we provide uh, the X rays three uh, such undulators. The difference between the, our facilities and the other facilities that we have, uh, uh, we call it uh, the X ray trains. Then that means. Uh, other facility, for example, Swiss fell, the Sakura, um, the also LCR is the uh, Parax fell. They each X ray uh, packet uh, that, that comes uh, what, or just includes just only one X ray packet, uh, X ray pulse. However, the, uh, our facility, we have uh, the, uh, the multiple the X ray pulses. We can include uh, each X ray train can include up to the 2,700 X-ray pulses. So we have uh, the large number of photons, and uh, even though the slow rep rate, that's uh, the, uh, the 10 health rep rate, but we have uh, the very no large number of photons compared to the other facilities. We are, now I'm working at the FXE beamline, and the FXE beamline belongs to the SASE one. Then the, there's a tandem beamline. So if we have uh, the beam time, the user beam time then the, in the night, uh, in, we are using the daytime, then in the night, the SPB other beamline, another beamline will use the night shift. So. This is uh, the inside of our beam line hatch. Then uh, we have uh, uh, we have the several components. Um, then we have uh, the UFRA detector and the large pixel, uh, uh, large pixel, uh, uh, large area pixel detectors on uh, the two user the scattering uh, experiment. Also, we have uh, the laser component uh, inside our hatch. So we can, in principle, we have uh, we can we already established the three. Uh, different experiment techniques of the X-ray diffraction, uh, X-ray solution scattering, uh, so we can measure the X-ray emissions. So these are now uh, we are using uh, these techniques normally. Then we have uh, we can do uh, some uh, we can observe the pump probe signals from these uh, different kind of techniques. Um, the our so we have uh, the this. These are our group uh, group members. So we have now we start uh, we have uh, uh, two times uh, open for proposals by year. So next for, uh, proposal is now uh, on will be uh, is planned on in July. So I uh, if you have interested in the, our beamline, please contact our beamline manager, uh, Chris Min. Then the, uh, the we will uh, discuss the the your proposals. And uh, this is my final slide. Thank you for attention and the questions are comment appreciate. Thank you, thank you very much for uh, the nice talk of Dr. Wemura. So the, it is very nice work on the on the photo catalyst with the router first uh, X of and XES technique. So now we have a question from Dr. Yu Jun Chan. So if you mic on directly ask him. His question is on chart. Why did you use liquid jet for tungsten oxide, but solid for other two materials? Could you use solid tungsten oxide for the first experiment? His question uh, okay. is. Uh, thank you for using. Um, yeah, so uh, in principle, the uh, our, we suppose that we would like to observe the 
uh, the dynamics of photocatalysts. The photocatalysts, uh, in principle, that they are nanoparticles, like uh, the diameter is 100 nanometer or something. Mm -hmm. So in principle, we try to observe, uh, our final goal is to, uh, the, to understand the chemical reaction dynamic, uh, chemical reaction, hold the chemical reaction, to, uh, that means the, the after the photo, uh, photo uh, electron, uh, electron hole dynamics, then the, that's promotes the, uh, the chemical reaction. That is why we started to use uh, the nanoparticles of the tank central axis. Of course, we can measure uh, the tank central axis of the thin films, but we at that moment, we started to use uh, the tank central axis and nanoparticles. And uh, it is better and if you measure the uh, the spectrum, uh, the X-ray absorption spectrum, it takes long time. Then the it is for us the, it is better to circulate the sample to reduce uh, the sample damage in case I am without. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so any other questions? So I have one question about the hematite. So the UD the XES. X-ray resonance in uh, X-ray spectroscopy. So you find some changes. Maybe the changes corresponding to some uh, species changes. So you show the one cartoon before. You show this several excitation state. Ah uh, yes. Um. First we use yeah. the, the four, Yeah. First we use the the hmm. four hundred extron volt. Ah, sorry, 400 nanometer. That's mm. uh, it's much larger than the band gap of hematite. Then the, uh, after the photo excitation, mm. the X electron will uh, electron will uh, already have uh, excess energy. Then the, that's relaxed to the uh, band edge positions. Mm -hmm. That is the first, the very fast mm -hmm. decay. Oh, we believe mm -hmm. that the very fast decay state. After that, also we didn't. Um, that's also the changes of. Uh, uh, the re further relaxation process. Mm. That means uh, the probably uh, the some uh, we suppose some literature suggested the polar alarm state mm -hmm. created after the this relaxation process. Probably we what we observed uh, this yeah. uh, the transient resonant in elastic scattering mm. it corresponds to the that's creation of the rock change of the local state because the, if polar alarm state creates the local structure distortion happens. However, unfortunately, we didn't get the uh, uh, enough time to measure the mm -hmm. several uh, resonant elastic scattering because the elastic scattering takes much time, more time to compare to the X absorption. Uh, however, we have, uh, for example, um, our, I discussed uh, <laughs> two, uh, two weeks ago, um, the, we yeah. observed the whole state. Nowadays, if we, uh, in diam at Diamond, we have, uh, they have uh, the uh, the below the 100 mi electron volt energy resolution resonant X-ray, uh, the spectrometer, uh, elastic spectrometer, we can uh, distinguish the uh, the uh, the, uh, the oscillation state of uh, mm. oxygen, oh. uh, the ga oxygen gas uh, molecules. So I I sub I I hope that if we miss for, uh, even though the very small intensity, but we can observed a very small, a very mm. tiny, different, uh, the small, the fine structure of the photo excited states using the X-ray, um, resonant X-ray uh, in elastic scattering, I suppose. Thank you, thank you very much. So any other questions? Oh, yeah, Abe-san. Hi, I may ask a question. Yes, uh, yes. I might say yes. at some point, but could you explain the geometry of the, oh, for tungsten toroxide topic, uh, geometry of laser and X-ray pulse the, uh, geometry, and also the elongated direction the B or C axis of the crystal? Um, so in principle, um, I, uh, this is, uh, yeah, so I will, uh, this is a brief, uh, uh, illustration of our experimental setup. Um, in principle, we use uh, the wicked jet. Mm -hmm. Then, the in principle, we don't care about the in principle, we don't care about the which uh, the axis, which axis aligns 
So oh. uh, in place of the rotate, in place of the uh, axis will rotate. So we don't care about the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the yeah. So okay. uh, the X ray and uh, X ray uh, the direction X X ray the uh, direction or uh, the laser uh, the laser axis against the the um the crest axis. But oh. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, we so. In provide that's it. I think the your question, uh, the point of your yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. So, I just imagine but, the the elongated axis is parallel to the uh, electron uh, electro field of the laser, but you don't care. I mean, you don't you don't handle the the. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, the, we we didn't set the uh, the I mean the, uh, mm. the electron field of the X rays or laser. So, but uh, if we have uh, the um S it epitaxial films of oh, yeah. center mm -hmm. that should be very interesting we can mm -hmm. selectively selectively uh the excite the uh the electrons to the uh, from the balance band to the conduction but that should be interesting i think good thanks okay so okay so any other questions okay so thank you very much, Dr. Wemura.